Hey, welcome back to the vlog, ladies and gentlemen. There's been some pretty major, eh, maybe not pretty major, but fairly major upgrades that we've made both to our living room and to my office. Because of the living room, it'll make more sense once I give it to you, but this is essentially what we've changed. So in case you remember the last time we got the chairs in the living room, we talked about mounting the TV to the wall, finally made it happen, and there you have it. Huge shout out to my friend Ross, who's serving in the Air Force, but he's on leave currently. He has a few more weeks back in the States, and then he'll return in the Air Force by the end of the month, a little bit before Thanksgiving, but he helped me mount this. I could not have done it by myself. It was a little complicated, but obviously not too bad. You just had to follow the instructions. Took us probably an hour in total, and we have Disney Plus running on it, of course, and I have to mention, this has to be my favorite TV setup I've ever had in my life. For one, this is an awesome television. I don't know if I've talked about it in vlogs before, but it cost me 400 bucks. It has a Roku built into it by default, so you don't have an Apple TV or a HDMI cable going somewhere else to some other box. This is running off just the firmware that the TV has pre-installed, so the only cable coming out of it is the power. This is the only wire this whole system is using. Obviously, we had to find the studs in the proper place in the wall, got everything mounted correctly, it's working now, and we just had a guy's night where me, Ross, my dad, and my brother-in-law, Trevor, all came over and we watched The Mandalorian on here. First episode seemed pretty good. The built-in speakers on this thing are also really nice. It's a 55-inch 4K panel, and I don't get why people spend so much on TVs. Like, I spend a lot on phones and stuff, but this thing was 400 bucks. The picture quality is amazing. It'll play stuff at 4K, and it looks excellent, and the built-in speakers on it are great, and my favorite part about this whole TV setup is there is only one remote. It's a pet peeve of mine. It's an issue I have with so many different TV setups out there. Everybody has to have multiple remotes. This is the cable remote. This is the TV remote. This is the Apple TV remote. You have to have like eight remotes sitting around the couch and you have to know which one to change for everything. And I love that I don't have that issue. I just have one remote, turns it on, turns it off, changes the volume. Everything can be done from a single remote. Minimal and clean. And obviously now there's nothing in the walkway over here except my moccasins, which I put on sometimes, but that allowed us to be a bit more creative and allowed me to be a lot more creative with my office, because I don't know if you guys remember, but before we had the TV over here on a white table. It's the same white table I've had for a long time, actually. I believe I unboxed the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 on this white table, which I have now put in my office for a specific use, which I will lead into now. So some of you may know about this already, but maybe some of you don't. I'm down to two monitors on my desk and the home pods, the dual setup are on this desk now. So what happened to the cinema display? Why does Drew just have the Predator and the iMac Pro on his desk now? Well, I'll tell you why, and thank you for asking, so that I can now have my own dedicated streaming desk. And the Mac Mini makes its return. That's the best part of this setup. So obviously we have the same microphone that I use over here for my live streams, and I record the podcast with that mic. Same exact brand, except this one's of course on a little stand. It's actually not that little. This is kind of big. I wish I had a small smaller one, but I use this setup for multiple different things. So for one, I'm using the Bose SoundLink Mini again, which I bought a long, long time ago, back in the attic days. This is my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, which I will do the live streaming with. Most of my videos that I've recorded for the past six months or so were all shot on this thing. I love Blackmagic cameras, and it has a HDMI out that feeds right into the Mac Mini, and I felt really bad because the Mac Mini, which I bought over a year ago in October of 2018, it's an amazing computer. The whole reason I bought it was for live streaming, but ever since I moved into this house, it just really did not get much use. I would always just kind of have it next to the Xbox on this old TV stand that I used to have right here. If you guys remember, I used to have the big 50 inch TV behind me, but I realized I wasn't really using it that much. And in this small office space where I have so many cameras, lights, and microphones, it was taking up a lot of room and I wasn't really utilizing it very much. So I decided that replacing the TV and stand with a designated live streaming desk would be more helpful because a lot of my Twitch streams lately I've just been doing with the iMac Pro webcam which is fine, but the Blackmagic looks miles better, super high quality streams, and I've already tested it. I've already done some live streams with this setup, and it's working wonderfully so far. There was a little bit of lag on the tech stream, but it was because the Mac Mini hasn't had the bitrate optimization yet, but hopefully that'll be fixed for the next Twitch stream. And also, this is really helpful when we do gaming streams, like when Wyatt comes over, now we can do LAN parties, so he'll play Minecraft on this computer while I live stream and play Minecraft on my computer. We can play together, and he even has his own dead 
dedicated microphone because this actually is an XLR cable that goes down to the cowboy hat, wraps around it, except when Wyatt comes over, then we extend this cable over here, plug it into the Zoom H6 microphone, which will sit here and then plug into the iMac. So I can balance both of our audios. You can hear both of us while watching my gameplay and the Mac mini doesn't have to worry about streaming anything. It just has to run Minecraft, which even though the Mac mini does not have its own dedicated GPU, it's just integrated graphics. It runs Minecraft okay. Not amazing, but fine. Just good enough for Wyatt, who's, you know, a, a major gamer boy. And the Zoom mic isn't there right now because I was using it to film something. For those of you who may not know, this is the Zoom H6 microphone. It's amazing. I've used it for years and years and years. I'd highly recommend it. And the nice thing about it is it has these XLR inputs. So I can plug up to four microphones in while still also having uh, this top piece, which for my tech videos and everything is a shotgun mic. And now you're probably noticing that I haven't cleaned this part of the room yet. I I haven't even plugged the Xbox in anywhere, which was kind of the sad part of this rearranging in my office and stuff. It resulted in me not really having a great place to put the Xbox. I'll think of something, but I enjoy it. I like my Xbox One and I've played it a lot, but for my current work setup and for our LAN parties and everything, it just makes the most amount of sense to use the Mac Mini for the live streams and for Wyatt to play on. So that's why the setup is the way it is right now. And I've been very happy with it. This is a much more live streaming friendly office configuration now because it allows me to do more gaming streams with Wyatt, which I love doing. It's just we've always run into so many technical difficulties and it allows the tech Twitch streams to look miles better than they did before. The background of the Twitch streams now is actually the tech background instead of before where I would go live and everyone would just see the horribly cluttered couch in shelves area, which this is just an ongoing project. I'm not finished with it yet, but uh, the plot continues. I'm just happy now that the Mac mini is finally getting like regular use out of it. Like every day I'm using it now. And honestly, I don't miss having three monitors on my desk. It's actually a lot better acoustically to have the home pods be on the corners because they're a stereo pad. And whenever I had triple monitors, I always found myself having at least one of them displaying stuff that wasn't really that necessary. So a lot of the time it would end up just being Twitter and messages open on the cinema display, which is a great screen. It's almost 10 years old and it's still amazing, but I was not really utilizing it that well. I can do everything I need to between editing, Discord, YouTube, whatever I need can be done on dual monitors, no problem. And the Predator is my favorite of the monitors. I know the iMac Pro is 5K, but I I honestly think that's overkill. You can't really see the difference after 1440p. It's just very slight. It's like, oh yeah, it's a little bit sharper. But what I prefer about the Predator monitor is the 165 refresh rate. That looks incredible, even when just doing basic things like managing windows on the desktop and stuff like that. It just looks awesome. And if I could exchange my 5K iMac Pro screen for a 1440p Pro motion display, I totally would. I'm totally about the extra frames over the extra pixels, but Apple doesn't really care about that when it comes to monitors. If you're curious what I record my videos on now, since this black magic doesn't really move very much, the pocket cinema is designated just for live streaming now. I actually am going back to recording on the black magic Ursa Mini. Ironic that it's called the Mini because this thing is huge and it weighs a ton, but it has pretty similar recording resolutions to the Pocket Cinema back there. I didn't really see a lot of people mention it. It does look a little bit different. I think yesterday's tech video or the last couple tech videos, depending on when this vlog gets uploaded, was shot on that camera. It still does 4K at 60. I did use it as my only camera for over a year, I believe, and it runs great. It has a 18 to 35 millimeter Sigma lens. It's an EF mount, unlike the Pocket Cinema, which is a micro four thirds. Mostly it's okay. One issue with it is I have a battery for it, but the battery stopped working. So the only way I can use this is if I leave it plugged into the wall, but it doesn't really leave my office. So plugged into the wall is fine. So the big boy is now designated for recording and it actually does a few things better that I wish the Pocket Cinema would do. One thing, for instance, is this little light that turns red when I start recording. When you only have three minutes left of storage space while recording, this will start blinking red to let you know like, hey, hey, your card's about to fill up. And for whatever reason, even though this pocket cinema is much better, it's smaller, it's cheaper, and it can still do all the 4K at 60 stuff, and it's new. I actually bought this brand new. I bought this used. This one doesn't do that. The light on the top will not blink red when you're about to run out of space, even though it does turn red when you're recording. So I like that part of the Ursa Mini. However, one thing I prefer about the pocket cinema is when you're playing back footage, you actually have like a time code head that you can scrub through. Both use touchscreens on the back, 
back. So this is still a touch interface and it's about the size of a phone. Very detailed display, but I prefer on the Pocket Cinema that I can like click and drag through the video. Whereas on this one, you can't do that. You just press play. Maybe there's a firmware update, but this doesn't have Wi-Fi, so I'm not really sure how to install it. I'll mess around with that later. It also can hold two CFast cards at the same time. The Pocket Cinema can only hold one. So if I want to record a video without stopping for like 40 minutes at 4K at 60, this can do that. The Pocket Cinema can't. But the main advantage here was being able to just have a camera designated for live streaming because before I just used the Pocket Cinema for everything because it was small and light. So I would have to record a video with the tripod and then when I wanted to go live, I would have to pick it up and try to stuff it back there, which since it's hard to get back there because of this desk, it's very difficult to get everything lined up correctly. And then I would have to plug in all the wires, the HDMI and the power supply, unplug all that, take the tripod out, put it back over here every time I wanted to record a video. It was just getting too complicated. That's why I started doing streams on the webcam. It wasn't great, but it was just much easier. This is much easier for everything now. It looks better, easier to do. So, so that sums up my madness my rearranging skills. And I also had a TV stand in here. I don't know if you guys remember that. It wasn't very good. You know, the drawers on it were stuck all the time. I didn't like it very much. So we actually just sold it and I'm surprised someone was willing to pay for it, but it's gone now. And we stubbed our toes on it a lot. So I hated it. And I was beginning to think it was cursed. Thankfully it's cursing some other family now because uh, we sold it. I'm amazed. But anyway, that sums up the new setup in the office and the living room. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any suggestions or requests, let me know on Twitter or Discord. Don't, don't write comments, people. They're useless. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.